Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox, and we have another episode of a series that I actually haven't done an episode of a while in. A while in? A while in. And that is DIYing your DMs. Can we also talk about my background at the moment? My fireplace, I've never filmed in front of it, and now that I painted it black, all I wanna do is film in front of it. Like, it's so pretty, and I set up the camera, and I was pretty shocked at how this looked. But besides that, we are gonna be doing some DIYs today, and they are so good, you guys. I feel like I haven't done a lot of DIYs on the channel lately. I've been doing more like full room makeovers or kitchen transformations or tip-driven videos, and I haven't done DIYs in a while. So I have four incredible projects for you guys today that you sent me over on Instagram. So if you're not already following me over on Instagram and TikTok, make sure to do so because you guys can actually send along DIY ideas. And if you're one to not stick through an entire DIY video, this one might change your mind because all four of these projects turned out absolutely incredible. And I'm so excited for you guys to see them and before jumping in quickly I wanted to share a special announcement. We were nominated for a Webby Award, which is absolutely insane Lone Fox was nominated, which is crazy And this was all because of you guys all the constant love and support We were nominated under the how to and DIY category, which is insane So I'm gonna leave the link at the top of the description box below it just takes a couple of seconds and you guys We could win this thing. So that's really really exciting, but let's go ahead and dive on into our DIYs grab my phone because I'm gonna read you guys our first DM that was sent over by Lone Fox family member Sid and she says hi Drew I've been eyeing this hook for a while now but can't rationalize spending $120 on it would love to see how you DIY it and I'm not too sure where this particular hook is from but from looking at it instantly in my head I came up with a couple of ideas and then I conceptualized it a bit more and this is what we created for our first project, we're going to be using a one and a half inch wooden dowel, some large wooden balls, some smaller wooden balls, and some epoxy. So with our larger wooden balls, I'm going to actually turn this into a screw. So I grabbed a screw from my stash that was two and a half inches long, and then on the back side of that ball, I actually drilled a hole wide enough, but not all the way through, just about half of an inch in there. And then using my welding epoxy, you can get this at any hardware store, I'll link it below for you guys. You're just going to mix up equal parts of that, and this will mount our screw inside of the ball and make it so that the ball is the actual screw or kind of the mechanism of the hook itself. So we're just going to want to make sure that our screw is securely fastened in here and this kind of welding epoxy works great for that. It is extremely strong. Like this is going absolutely nowhere and I set it on top of a vase to cure for about six hours. Once it was done curing, I pulled off the tape and you guys... <laughs> It's not coming out. It wasn't really going anywhere, so I grabbed some gloss glaze. This is the Sculpey Gloss Glaze, and all the materials I'm using for all of these projects I will link below for you guys, so just make sure to check the description box. So I painted the larger ball with the gloss glaze only, and then over on the smaller ball, I'm using some gold paint just to go ahead and paint on this ball here. Now I'm gonna do two coats of the gold paint and then one coat of the epoxy just to make it nice and shiny. I went outside and cut down my dowel to about nine inches tall, but you can adjust it to whatever height you'd like it to be and I went ahead and glued on my smaller one. As you can see, it had a hole in the back side, but I just hid that on the back side, and then I figured out where I wanted my larger ball screw, or the actual piece that is going to mount this to the wall to go, and I drilled directly through my dowel. Now this is an oak dowel, and it was surprisingly hard to drill through, but I got it through, and as you can see, our nice screw ball. That sounds so strange, fits right through. And all you have to do to mount this on the wall is simply place the screw through your dowel and then just screw it right into the wall. You might wanna drill a hole first, a little bit smaller than your screw, but once you have it in, it is nice and firm and I just love the minimal kind of Scandinavian vibe of this. I feel like it's very sculptural, but also functional. That hook was honestly pretty cute and surprisingly easy. Uh, but our next project 
is not as easy. It's a little bit more intense, but it's definitely doable, you guys. This was sent over by Christian, and he said, I saw these photos on Pinterest the other day and saved them, and I'll pop them up right here for a DIY in your DMs episode. And I can't remember if you've done a rattan light fixture, but I feel like this one screams Lone Fox. I don't know if you're still into rattan or cane, but love you, Drew. And thank you so much, Christian. Love you as well. And I definitely am into rattan and cane. I still use it in a lot of my designs, but I actually prefer the stained version or like darker cane and darker rattan lately. So I'm going to put my own spin on this particular chandelier right here and actually create it for a fraction a fraction of the price which is absolutely insane but this is how I did it the first material we need for this project is some woven cane and I got this at a local shop here in Los Angeles the cane and basket supply I will link them below they are incredible you guys I actually loved this color of cane and asked them like why it was this color and they said it was because it was 50 years old and they sold it to me for 250 a foot so I was pretty excited about that I brought it home and soaked it in some hot water in my bathtub for about 30 minutes and while that was soaking inside I also picked up six of these 12 inch embroidery hoops from the craft store and I'm actually going to be spray painting these embroidery hoops with some black spray paint so you can get these on Amazon in bulk or wherever you'd like to I'll link them below for you guys and I'm using a satin black finish spray paint and I'm just going to be spraying the front side and back side completely with a full coat of black and while those dried outside I went back inside and as you can see the water changed colors tremendously I couldn't believe it was this dark but I just pulled it out of the bath and dried it off with a towel and then we're ready for our next step in the process so I grabbed my embroidery hoops from drying outside brought them in and opened them to their fullest width and what we're going to be doing is actually cutting a small piece of rattan that will fit inside of that section and essentially pressing it into an embroidery hoop like you would fabric now I thought it would be pretty simple once I softened them to just press it right in but it definitely was not as easy as I thought but if you have a friend it is so much easier if you can have four hands on the embroidery hoop you can kind of press from all four directions and the top hoop will slip over the bottom one and it's just much easier so once I had it all like that I tightened it up with some pliers on the little screw itself and you're just going to repeat the process to the rest of your five embroidery hoops I ended up using a total of six of these circles but you can totally adjust it to however many you would like and once you have all six of them placed with the rattan on the inside just bring them outside to fully dry for about an hour or two now for the base of the lamp, I didn't really know what to use, but I had this small planter I got at the Goodwill for $3 a while back, so I ended up thinking it would be a perfect size for this, but I didn't love the dark brown wood, so I just did a coat of the satin black as well. I really want the rattan to be the pop and kind of focal of this light, so the black is going to be kind of our trim and accent color. So after I sprayed that and it was drying, I went back in and cut all of our excess rattan and tightened all of the screws of our embroidery hoops so they were good to go once we wanted to kind of assemble our light fixture. I will say the hardest part of this entire process was drilling the hole in the top of our pot here. It wasn't hard, it was just a little scary, but I got it, do not worry. Now I'm slipping in an Ikea light cord. I use these for all my DIY lights. They're just the best light cord, super simple and affordable. Popped on the insert on the inside there. And then it was time to figure out how I was gonna be attaching everything together. So I had these eighth inch dowels and I thought, why don't I just use these to attach from the little pot to the rattan circles? And you guys look at this tiny little miter saw I got on Amazon. You need this. It is perfect for dowels or small DIY craft projects. I'll link it for you. But I just drilled right through the side of our embroidery hoop and pushed our dowel into it. I used a drill bit that was a little bit smaller than the dowel itself, so I had to use some force, and the pressure is what's holding everything together. So I cut each of these sticks to about six inches, but I did vary the lengths of them so that the circles would kind of stick off in different areas. And then I drilled directly into the pot, as you could see, and and I just stuck the stick inside and inserted each of our embroidery hoops that are filled with the rattan material into our light fixture. And it was really simple. This process was actually the easiest part of the whole thing, I'd say. Um, but once you have it completely done, you can totally go back and adjust it if you'd like to. But I would also suggest painting your dowel. So I just used some black acrylic paint to go in and paint all of our connectors, which overall made this light look finished and complete and one solid piece. I cannot believe this is a DIY my project.
Okay, guys, don't click out yet. I promise you the next two projects are not as hard. They're really cute, though. And our next one is from Caroline. And she actually didn't send a message. She just wrote DIY my DM and sent a photo of her DM. And you know what, Caroline? I am going to do just that. And she actually sent along this record player, which I believe looks handmade. It looks pretty simple. And I headed to the hardware store, got some wood and a couple of supplies, and actually created this for a very, very affordable price point. Project number three is the easiest furniture build ever. I picked up three of these boards from Lowe's. They are 16 by 48 and they are actually paneled and glued together, but I love that look because when you stain it, it almost gives you like this checkerboard effect. So on our first board, we're actually gonna be cutting this one down to three different sizes. And I drew a bunch of diagrams for this one. So as you can see, we have our three boards here to start. They were $15 a piece. And with our first one, we're gonna cut three 15 inch sections out of it. So that's exactly what I'm doing now. And I think this wood was really affordable because it's actually glued together, but it's still really strong in the end, and I love it for this project. Now next, for our cut, we're gonna take our second piece of wood and chop nine inches off the bottom of that. This is going to be the top of our record player, and that nine inch section that we cut off is gonna be the area on the side where we're gonna add our records to. So I'm just cutting that off right now, and when you piece your cuts together, it's gonna look something like this. So I ended up using my nail gun just to hold the pieces together while I went in with my drill to drill some pilot holes. Now this is totally necessary when you're using wood like this because you're not going to want the screw to split it. So drill a pilot hole first like this and then drill your screw in next. And I'm using two and a half inch screws here and I just always use the same exact one. I'll link them below for you guys. They're my favorite. So I screwed on our top portion first and then I'm screwing on the bottom here. So this is going to be flipped over and that's going to be the base of our unit. And you're also going to want to add that last 15 inch section to that far edge and then drill all the pilot holes in this area as well and screw directly in to create this base here. Now it looks a little crooked on camera, but I promise to you it wasn't. The floor is just crazy. And now we're going to go ahead and create the legs, which I wanted to give this piece more of a mid-century leg. So I went ahead and cut down a piece of wood to nine inches tall. And what I'm going to be doing is measuring over two and a half inches on the top and one and three quarters on the bottom. Connect those lines together and that's going to give you the angle you need. And you can just repeat that process all the way across your wood to get however many legs that you want. And I ended up needing four of them. So these are my cut out legs here. And I went to go place them on the bottom, but I realized they just stuck straight up and down, which was not the look I was going for. I really wanted a bit of an angle to them. So all you have to do to get that angle is just go ahead and measure half of an inch to nothing on the end there. If you can see, I'm going from half of an inch on one side to nothing on the opposite side, chopping that off and using some L brackets to mount this onto the bottom of our piece. Now it's really nice actually having this paneled wood because it kind of acts as a line for you. So you know exactly where to put your legs. So I just followed the paneling on the wood and just made made sure that they were all in the right place. And I did use two brackets on the front side and back side of each leg. And I just made sure to set the front leg back far enough to where the only way you'd see it is if you're really underneath it and up close to it, you know, but it really did need this structure and durability. So I wanted to make sure to add two brackets to each side and I flipped it over and I was thoroughly impressed with this piece, you guys, but the staining is what really made it come to life. I used a special walnut stain by Minwax and because of the panel of this wood, every single section on this media console literally was different tones, which I loved so much. Like each little piece of wood had its own little moment and all the knots really popped out. And overall, I just feel like this wood stained beautifully. I could not believe this ended up being a $50 record player in the end. Everything looks so high end and it looks like a piece you'd find at Urban Outfitters. project is perfect for anyone who has a pet. This is such a cute idea and actually Lone Fox family member Lauren sent this over and she just said super cute DIY project and sent a photo of it and it was this rattan like dog cage side table situation and I just loved the way that it looked and it instantly made me think of the tray table that Ikea had and I knew I had one on hand so I whipped out some cane, my tray table and put together a really cute side table that doubles as like a little house for your cat or dog as well.
Whenever I get the opportunity to DIY something pet related, I always go for it. So I grabbed this Gladham Ikea side table, which I actually already had in my stash, and I moved the tray from the top to the bottom, and then I got this 18 inch round piece of wood from Lowe's and this 24 inch wide rattan material from the same basket and cane supply shop in Los Angeles. Now what I wanted to do was figure out how much of this I actually needed, and I ended up buying six feet of it just to make sure I had enough, but I went and wrapped it around my piece and just cut off any excess and then I wanted to find the exact middle of our cane to create the opening for our little pet home. And to do that, I rolled out some paper. This is the kids' craft paper from Ikea. I'm obsessed with it. I have like 10 rolls at my house and I just cut a piece off, but I made sure to fold it in half because we're gonna draw half of our arch shape onto this. And when we cut it out and open it, it's gonna be the full arch. So I just freehanded this. I always freehand my arches, but if you wanna draw one properly, you can totally like use a rounded bowl or something to do so. But I cut this out and this is what my shape ended up looking like once I had opened it up, which was pretty nice. I love the way that it looked. And I then went ahead and trimmed off one of the unfinished edges. I just wanted to make this nice and straight so I can see what we were working with because this is gonna be the bottom of our opening. So I kind of wanted to figure out again where the middle was. And then I placed my template that I created for the arch right in the middle and drew around that on the rattan material and then used some scissors to cut out our opening. Once that opening was cut out, I also got some reed spline from the same store and I wanted to just glue this around to create a nice casing and just overall finish off the piece. But as I started to glue it and wrap it around, it snapped, so I had to go in with a new idea. So I actually just grabbed some macrame cording and used three pieces of it, and it was a lot easier. I was easily able to, of course, wrap this and kind of create a finished edge on our rattan material. some hot glue to the bottom there just so that it didn't fray. Now for the wood top, this is an 18 inch wood round I got at Lowe's, but the thing is, is it doesn't fit properly on top, but it almost does. So I marked exactly where all four sides where I needed to kind of dremel out a small piece of the wood. And I did that all the way around the table there. As you can see, it's just so close to fitting, but sadly it didn't fit. So I just used a dremel, which I'm very excited. I finally got to use this. I've had it for a while and I dremeled out some small sections. It was super easy. I love this tool and it just slipped right in to our side table there and that's going to be the top of our table. So now we're going to go ahead and just start wrapping the cane material around to figure out where or how tall I want this to go and once you figure out the height that you want for your rattan, just cut it off. And the great thing about rattan is it's kind of like a grid so you can just cut it on the grid. You don't have to use any rulers or anything and I figured out where I wanted that to go and then I decided to finish off the top and bottom edges before applying it. And I just went ahead and used this 5 8 inch wood piece. I don't exactly know what this is used for. I actually think it might be for weaving baskets, honestly. So I glued that on the top and bottom there, and then I slipped it in. And the great thing is that the actual legs of the table hold it inside, but the tray at the bottom is what gives it that rounded shape. So I'm just wrapping it around, and the rattan itself, of course, is pretty sturdy, so it's going to stand upright. And I just glued this to the bottom of the tray there. And then on the back side, I went ahead and cut down the middle of the back so that we could create a seam. And I'm gonna finish that off with some of that same wood material we used on the top and bottom. That material is actually really nice. It gives you a nice clean finish and overall just makes the rattan look like it was woven for the piece as opposed to like you making it for the piece. So I glued this strip down the back side and I also added one on the inside as well just so you couldn't see that glue or any of those raw edges on the inside. And the final step was to add a finish. Now you can go ahead and stain the top of the wood if you want to or paint it, but I just wanted to give it a clear coat because I like how the wood matched the cane. Uh, so I just felt like it was pretty cohesive. And this is how the finished pet home turned out. Those were all the projects in today's DIY in your DMs episode. If you would like to potentially have yours featured in a new episode, make sure to head over and follow me over on Instagram and TikTok, both of Lone Fox Home, and you could DM me absolutely any ideas you have. I always go through my DMs and save projects and screenshot them if I see them, so you might see them in a later video as well. But this video was definitely jam-packed, so I'll let you guys get on your way. If you are not already, make sure to subscribe to the Lone Fox channel. That way you don't miss any videos. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week, along with Instagram 
and TikTok. And guys, last but not least, do not forget to vote for Lone Fox for the Webby Award. I will leave the link at the top of the description box below. It's super simple to vote and I would appreciate it so much, you guys. I think we got this. Very excited. I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye, everyone.